Hey there, everybody. Welcome. We are in a study called Lesser Known People of the Bible. And today we're going to look at one of my favorite lesser known people in the Bible, a man by the name of Obed-Edom. So if you listen to much of my teaching or preaching, you probably have heard me talk about Obed-Edom before. But there's a wonderful story tucked away in both the book of Joshua and in 1 Chronicles 13. So if you have a Bible and you can turn there, we're going to look at the 1 Chronicles 13 uh, version of the story. They're nearly identical, but this one is really concise and clear. So 1 Chronicles 13, it's a short chapter, and we're going to read the whole chapter, only 14 verses. And I'm not going to give you a ton of background about the story. We'll go through it quickly so you get an understanding of what's going on but uh, we're going to cover it pretty quickly. So the Ark of the Covenant is the premier piece of furniture that God had Moses build to put into the tabernacle, and eventually David would put it into, well, no, David wouldn't. Solomon would put it into the temple. And it had been captured by the Philistine people. God judged the Philistines for possessing it, and so they got rid of it. They put it in a cart, and uh, put a couple uh, oxen with it, and they slapped the oxen on the hindquarter and sent it on its way. So it was gone from uh, Philistia, the land of the Philistines, and a priest named Abinadab had the Ark of the Covenant. So David wants to retrieve it, and he wants to bring it back to Jerusalem. It had been gone for 20 years from Jerusalem. Now, the thing about the Ark of the Covenant was it was the piece of furniture that abode in the temple and in the tabernacle within the Holy of Holies. The high priest would sprinkle the blood of the atoning sacrifice on the mercy seat, and God's very presence dwelt with this Ark of the Covenant. So by getting the Ark of the Covenant back to Jerusalem, then God's presence would be back in Jerusalem as well. So David goes and he gets a group of men and he gets what is called a new cart. So like a little wagon and he hitches two oxen to this wagon and they load the Ark of the Covenant into the back of the wagon. Now, God had never instructed the ark to be transported in this way. The ark had rings on each of the corner of it, and staves or long staffs would run through those rings, and then four men would bear up the ark of the covenant and carry it together. Now, David should have known this. I can't imagine that he didn't, but for whatever reason, he decides to put it in the back of this cart. So these two oxen are pulling this cart, and while pulling it, the oxen get startled, the ark jostles in the back of the wagon, and a man named Uzzah reaches out to steady the ark. Now God had given a command to Moses, no human being is to touch the ark of the covenant with their hands, or with anything else for that matter. And Uzzah, when he touches it, he drops dead on the spot. Now David and the people had been rejoicing, but now this man is dead, and so they stop, and they're not going to transport it the rest of the way. They're beside the house of a man named Obed-Edom, and so they go ahead and they take the ark out of the cart, and they store it in the house of Obed-Edom, and it lasts there three months before David comes back to retrieve it. So that's the story. Let's read it now in 1 Chronicles 13. And David consulted with the captains of thousands and hundreds and with every leader. And David said unto all the congregation of Israel, If it seem good unto you, and that it be of the Lord our God, let us send abroad unto our brethren everywhere that are left in all the land of Israel, and with them also to do the priests and Levites, which are in their cities and suburbs, that they may gather themselves unto us. And let us bring again the ark of our God to us, for we inquired not at it in the days of Saul. And all the congregation said that they would do so, for the thing was right in the eyes of all the people. So David has the backing of the people behind this idea to go and retrieve the ark and bring it back. Verse 5, So David gathered all Israel together from Jihor of Egypt, even unto the entering of Hamath, to bring the ark of God from Kirjith Jerim. And David went up in all Israel to Baala, that is to Kirjith Jerim, which belongeth to Judah, to bring up thence the ark of God the Lord, that dwelleth between the cherubims, whose name is called on it. And they carried the ark of God in a new cart out of the house of Abinadab, 
and Uzzah and Ahio drave the cart. And David and all Israel played before God with all their might and with singing and with harps and with psalteries and with timbrels and with cymbals and with trumpets. So there's this great parade, this celebration, the music's being played. People are singing and these two men, Uzzah and Ahio, are driving the cart of oxen with the ark in it. Verse 9, And when they came to the threshing floor of Kaidan, Uzzah put forth his hand to hold the ark, for the oxen stumbled. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Uzzah, and he smote him, because he put his hand to the ark, and there he died before God. And David was displeased, because the Lord had made a breach upon Uzzah. Wherefore, that place is called Perez Uzzah to this day. And David was afraid of God that day, saying, How shall I bring the ark of God home to me? So David brought not the ark home to himself to the city of David, but carried it aside into the house of Obed-Edom the Gittite. And the ark of God remained with the family of Obed-Edom in his house three months. Now that's where I stop the story with you. There's one more sentence here. And the Lord blessed the house of Obed-Edom and all that he had. So here's the deal. The ark has not been in Jerusalem for all of the time of King Saul. That's what David said. It had been in the house of Abinadab. David goes and gets it. They had this catastrophe with Uzzah. The ark goes to the house of Obed-Edom. It's there three months. And while it's in the house of Obed-Edom, the Bible says the Lord blessed the house of Obed-Edom and all that he had. So Obed-Edom and everyone in his household, his family unit, Everyone was blessed. Everything was blessed. Why was it blessed? Well, what is the difference between before the blessing and after the blessing? It's the Ark of the Covenant. But it's not just the Ark of the Covenant. It's the presence of God. And so uh, what we learn from this is that God's presence makes a significant difference in our lives. Something else I want to bring out here is Obed-Edom is a Gittite. That means he's from the city of Gath. If you know the city of Gath, you know that Goliath is from the city of Gath. Well, Goliath was a Philistine, an enemy of God, and Obed-Edom is a Philistine. He's from Gath. And here, this, this Philistine, this Gentile, has the Ark of the Covenant in his house, and God blesses him. Now, we learn elsewhere in Scripture that God is no respecter of persons. And so, as no respecter of persons, if his presence is in the house of a Jew, he will bless the house of that Jew. If his presence is in the house of a Gentile, then that Gentile will be blessed, him or herself. God blesses those who spend time in his presence. But now the bad news for Obed-Edom is after three months, David comes and retrieves the Ark of the Covenant. But if you'll go to 1 Chronicles chapter 15, just two chapters further, I want to get to verse number 18 here. And there's a listing of names of people who are involved with the ministry of music and so forth. Uh, let's go to verse 14. So the priests and Levites sanctified themselves to bring up the ark of the Lord God of Israel. And the children of the Levites bear the ark of God upon their shoulders with the staves thereon. Now God, or now David is obeying God's command to use the staves as Moses commanded according to the word of the Lord. And David spake to the chief of the Levites to appoint their brethren to be the singers with instruments of music, psalteries and harps and cymbals, sounding by lifting up the voice with joy. So the Levites appointed Heman the son of Joel and of his brethren, Asaph the son of Berechiah, and of the sons of Merari their brethren, Ethan the son of Cushiah, and with them their brethren of the second degree, Zechariah, Ben, and Jeaziel, and Shemarimoth, and Jehiel, and Unai, and Eliab, and Benaiah, and Messiah, and Mattathiah, and Eliphelah, and Milkniah, and Obed-Edom, and Jeel, the porters. So the initial listing there are for the musicians, and then we get to the end here, and we find Obed-Edom and Jeel, 
the porters. So what is a porter? A porter's a gatekeeper, a door greeter, uh, a simple job, an easy job. So here's what I take from this. Obed-Edom, a Gentile, a Philistine, experiences the presence of God in his life for three months. His family is never the same again. Then David comes and gets the ark. And Obed-Edom decided, you know what? I'm not going to live without God's blessing in my life any longer. And he leaves and he goes to Jerusalem. And he becomes a porter in the house of God because he's not willing to leave the God's leave God's presence any longer. Psalm 84 verse 10 says this, for a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. And what that means is one day with God is better than a thousand without him. And the verse finishes, I would I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. And I think that's exactly Obed-Edom's sentiments there. He would rather spend one day with God than a thousand without him. And if it means being a doorkeeper, so be it. He's glad to be a porter in the house of God. I hope you feel the same way. And if you don't, you ought to try spending some time with God and see about the difference that he makes in your life. All right. Thanks so much for watching. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you tomorrow with another lesser known person from the Bible.